Yeah, so um, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I felt the need to uh, make a video about uh, mental wellness um, and kind of explain uh, what God has revealed to me as far as uh, what they can, what people consider to be uh, mental illness. And uh, yeah, I know what, for me it's kind of a little bit awkward to uh make a video and not just talk to somebody i can talk to somebody about this in person but making a video is, seems kind of awkward and a little bit strange but my hope is that uh there will be people um that have been diagnosed with uh mental illness that will be able to watch this video and learn something from it um I've come to the understanding what I feel like God has revealed to me is that uh, mental, what they consider to be mental illness is basically just your mental state of mind. So it's state your state of mind. Um, it's not a it's not a disease. It's not something that you are stuck with that you've been born with that uh, is a permanent thing. It's just a temporary thing, and it all has to do with how you think. Um, a lot of doctors, they don't believe in God and they, they believe everything is rooted in the physical because they just think that we are a bunch of chemicals, a bunch of elements, and we just evolved over time and we came from nothing. So they don't understand that we're actually spiritual beings created by God. And uh, it isn't our uh, physical that dictates to us how we are. It's actually the spiritual and our mental so it's not chemicals in your brain that is controlling you. It is your brain controlling you and your mind. And potentially, I don't know, but depending on how you think actually can change your brain chemistry. So, for example, if you think negative thoughts, you are going to feel depressed. It's not that you have an illness called depression. No, it is that you are having negative thoughts and the result of negative thinking is feeling negative and feeling depressed. Same with schizophrenia. It's schizophrenia is just a is just a label they made up to slap on people and they they say it there is such a thing there isn't. It all has to do with how you think. So um I was diagnosed schiz I was born again when I was 16 and I was diagnosed uh with schiz they said I had schizophrenia when I was 17. And basically, they the reason they told me that, they said I was delusional, that my thoughts weren't correct, and that basically that they their thoughts were correct and my thoughts weren't. And I believe in God, and I think part of even me having a belief in God, to them, it's you're, you're a lunatic. Uh, a lot of people think that if you believe in the truth, actually God is the truth, believing in the truth is not lunacy. That is, uh, it's sound ofness of mind and it's not for fools it's actually for the wise so uh, belief in God is not a crazy thing it's not a crazy idea it to those people that don't believe in God they think it's crazy but actually they don't realize that they're the ones that are out of their minds because and and wait and so to speak out of their minds I mean that they're not in their right mind that they are believing lies instead of the truth so um Anyways, uh, what I discovered was that, uh, and fortunately God, well, God revealed it to me right away that, uh, no, I didn't have, yeah, maybe I may have had uh, some things going on in my mind that uh, maybe weren't uh, correct and they were causing me to have problems, but that didn't mean that I had uh, a physical illness that I was schizophrenic. All it meant was that I was having ideas and thoughts that needed uh, to be dealt with, and uh, and basically uh, a lot of ha that has to do with uh, thinking rationally, learning how to overcome um, things, and having people around that understand. Um, I I was around a lot of people. Um, I, I, even as a Christian, I wasn't around other Christians. I was all alone, and uh, I had nobody around me that understood me. Um, my belief in God, people didn't understand, and any other beliefs that I had, um, people say, would say no. Um, I didn't. 
I, I see the, the education system as brainwash education, so I didn't want to be in school. Um, I didn't want to drive in a car. I didn't want to be in motor vehicles because I see that they're destructive. But if you tell people, oh, no, I don't want to be in school because it's brainwash education, and, and why bother? Because a lot of jobs you could just do, and you wouldn't even need a day of school. All you, all you do is just do what they tell you. You know, they say do this and you do it. Like, you don't need to know math. Barely you need to know math, English, science, all this stuff. So what's the point of of learning all this stuff? I, I did learn stuff in school, but there are some things in school that they teach that aren't even true. So you're being force-fed to uh, being taught things that aren't true. Like, for instance, the theory of evolution. It's a lie. So they teach it to people in school and tell you like this is the truth and kind of what they do in school is they teach you the answers and then they test you whether or not you can you can give them back their answers that they have told you. Um, they'll ask you the questions and then you have to repeat the answers that they have told you, what is the correct answer, and if you answer otherwise, then they consider it to be incorrect. And all it is is a big test on whether or not you can remember what they've told you what the answer is. And that's what school's all about. So, and a lot of times you just forget what you learn anyways. And so what is the point? So I didn't want to be in school. I didn't want to ride around in automobiles because people are killing themselves, killing and uh, killing each other and killing animals and the air is being polluted. So when you tell people that and they think, oh, well, you got to, you got to drive and you got to ride in cars. Like, even though we've only had motor vehicles for the last like hundred years, people like think you can't live without them. And now people with phones, oh, like they think you can't live without a phone or all these things that people think you got to have. Really, what you can't live without is God. God is actually the giver of life. He gave us life. So if you think you can live without God, well, you're you're sadly mistaken, and hopefully you'll come to your senses. But to get back to uh, what I was talking about, um, as far as uh, what they consider to be mental illness, is just your mental state of mind, which I said earlier. And uh, I had, fortunately, people that came along, um, God sent them into my life, and uh, that were understanding people, people that had gone through... Uh, what I had gone through, and we could talk some sense, talk, uh, say, even, um, uh, what's the word, uh, kind of like, um, hmm, I'm trying to think, oh, uh, not, uh, oh, anyways, so, uh, sorry, couldn't think of the word, but, uh, that's just the way that, how that goes, so, uh, Basically, I was told that uh, I'd never be able to work again. They had me on these pills that made me feel uh, horrific. Uh, the first pill, after speaking to a doctor for like 15 minutes, uh, I was admitted into hospital and uh, they started giving me pills. And uh, I took the pill. It was called Haloperidol. Short, they just call, for short, they call it Haldol. And it kind of sounds like hell doll, and, and that's how it made me feel. I felt like hell. I felt totally horrific. Like, I just wanted to die. And um, so, uh, yeah, that's how, it, that's how it made me feel. And then, so they made me feel like I wanted to die, and then they told me I was better. And uh, so it seems really weird to me that you uh, give somebody a drug that makes them feel horrible, horrific i just felt it's like the worst feeling in the world i will all i want to do is like lay in bed and sleep all day and they tell me that i'm better like that seems really really weird and all i needed was love and understanding and someone to talk to and if there was some uh mental things that i needed to deal with then uh that's all i needed was just uh to work those things out which i eventually did with the help of other people and so they told me I couldn't work. I, I was on ODSP because they told me I couldn't work. They put me in a group home because they didn't think I could take care of myself. I was smoking cigarettes. And uh, I had spent two years in the hospital uh, in a four-year period, uh, off and on, two years in total. And I, at 20 years old, I was so out of shape I could barely stand up. And so little by little, uh, God helped me. 
Um, I, and eventually I got out of the group home and I, uh, I, um, got off the medication, um, slowly. I, I didn't necessarily do it deliberately. Um, but, uh, God helped me do that. And, and slowly over time, I weaned myself off. Um, first it just started out by accident cause, uh, I was on most of this drugs, what I just call drugs not medication, drugs, they're drugs, and uh, I was on uh, most of these drugs at night and some in the morning, well, that makes you tired, so I didn't, I didn't want to take these little, like there was a bit in the morning I would take and make me tired, well, I didn't want to be tired, I want to be up in the daytime doing things, so I, I just stopped a little bit in the morning, and then after a while, you know, I was fine and nothing really changed. And then I, and then I got the idea, hey, well, I, I stopped this in the morning. I'm fine. Well, why not, why not just I start cutting back at night too? So over, I would say even a four-year period or maybe even longer, I cut back like, you know, 25 milligrams maybe at first. And then, and then another 25. And eventually, over many years... I cut myself right off, and I didn't. I didn't uh, tell very many people, because um, if you go to the doctor and you ask them to reduce your medication, a lot of times what they do is they'll give you more, because if you're going there and asking them to reduce your medication, they think, oh, there's something wrong with this person. They're wanting to reduce their medication. There's something wrong for them thinking that and wanting that. We'll give them more, and that's what they do. And that was my experience, and I and I know that's other people's experience. So I didn't tell anyone that, uh, except for very few people that I could trust. And I had a very good friend when I uh, completely stopped. I had a very good friend, and she was when I told her that I had completely stopped, and that was uh, eleven years ago, um, December thirty first, two thousand and ten, was the last time I took any medication. And I don't take cough syrups, uh, Tylenol, any drugs at all. And I'm perfectly healthy and fine and God takes care of me. So, but anyways, uh, when I told my friend that I had stopped taking these pills, she was scared. She thought I was going to go ballistic and like go and maybe start killing people and all these weird ideas that people think that what people are going to do. And the funny thing was that over time, she stayed away from me, you know, um, didn't want to get around me. But over time, I got talking to her and uh, she realized, and so did I. She's like, wow, you're better now. And I was like, I know. Like those pills that they, they had me on, the antipsychotic and even antidepressant, and these mood changing, mind altering drugs, they mess with your brain. They and I and I look back and I see how they played weird tricks on my mind. These drugs that were supposed to supposed to help people with their minds were actually playing weird tricks. And I know you might not believe this, but if you're on these medications, you might. These people giving out these drugs never even you don't they don't even know what it's like because they've never even taken them themselves. They don't know what it does to anyone. They just think they do. They're just observing. They don't know what people's problems are. That's why the best help comes from people that have gone through these things themselves. So uh, I was able to get off these medications. I was able to get off ODSP and get a job. I started out by volunteering at a Salvation Army thrift store, and then I had a few hours of work. And then after that, I went to another job that I had more hours, like part-time. And, and, and then from there, I went to a full-time job. And I, and I had a full-time job, and then I bought my own house. And, uh, and this is just all step-by-step, step, little steps at a time, baby steps. And, uh, I was at one, and I was up to 250 pounds from the drugs and inactivity, and then I lost 50 pounds. I was down to 200, and then, unfortunately, I went back up and, and even more. I was at 280 pounds. And God helped me to uh, get back in shape and lose the weight. So I uh, learned to eat proper and got a ton of exercise. I started getting into bike riding, kayaking, hiking. And uh, I basically went from when I was 20 to be able to hardly stand to biking like 
long distances, like uh, 200, 300. I'd go, I don't know, you probably, you know, like St. Mary's, a lot of people don't know. Um, St. Mary's, Ontario, and I bike down to Lake Erie and across, and the first, and up to Niagara Falls and Lake Huron, over to Grand Bend, and up to Godrich, and over to Kitchener, and and uh, and basically, I got super healthy, and I was going on like a 110 kilometer hike, three day hike by myself, and and uh, camping, like just carrying what I needed, and. Uh, and and at, and so I just want to share that with you. Try and encourage people that uh, if you have a friend or if you're someone that was diagnosed with uh, so-called mental illness, um, this is not a permanent thing. You can overcome it, and it's basically it's just you have to learn to uh, take control of your mind and think rationally. That's one big thing I would say is you got to think rationally. You got to get proper thoughts. And basically, it also, uh, we need God to help us to in order to know what's true. If we, we have to fill our mind with the truth, and the truth comes from God. So if we have these weird ideas in our in our brain, and we have uh, what we believe is the truth, but it's actually lies. If we're thinking lies and weird ideas, we're gonna, you know, our lives are gonna reflect that. Um, so. If you can get your thoughts in line, and, and and it's a process, you can change your mind. Your mind is not uh, stuck. It's not something that can't be changed. It can be. You're not, uh, you're not ill. Uh, you may have some mental uh, issues that you may need, need dealt with, but that is possible. You can deal with these things. Um, if you have anxiety, I've had anxiety issues before that I've overcome um, by facing my fears, thinking rationally, and uh, and sometimes I just wanted to stay in indoors, and I was afraid people were watching me, and and but I got out and I walked, and and over time I just realized, you know, that was just all in my head. And yeah, so and maybe people do look at you from time to time, but so what? You know, like I don't have anything to hide, and uh, I'm uh, very open. And uh, uh, basically, I, I expose myself to God. Everything about me, I have. I, I'm not hiding. I know I've done things wrong in my life, and so is so is everyone. So there's no need to hide from who we are. There's no need to pretend uh, that we're somebody that we're not. Um, the best thing is to, to do is to be honest with ourselves, to be honest with each other, and to be honest with God. And if we can be honest with ourselves and with each other and with God, um, that is actually helpful. But if you uh, are not honest and you hide the truth from people and you can't be honest with yourself, you can't. you won't be able to deal with your problems that you may have or any difficulty um, or get any help. The first uh, thing you need to do in order to get help is to admit that you have a problem. And uh, we all have a problem with sin. We have all committed sin and we all need uh, forgiveness for our sins because we justly deserve punishment for the evil that we have done. That's what evil justly deserves is punishment. That's not what God desires. God's desire is to forgive. He wants to have mercy on you, but he cannot have mercy and forgive those who want to continue doing evil and don't want to be forgiven. People that want to continue doing evil, they will be punished by God. Thankfully for all those who cry out to uh, God through Jesus Christ, the one who came to earth and he bore our sins and our punishment upon himself. God made the way to be be made right with himself. We can't earn our way to God. We can't do enough good to go and be with God. We have to accept the way that God has made. God has prepared the way for all those who want to go and be with God. That's through Jesus. And, um, and, uh, I'm, I'm a living testimony of the fact that uh, you can overcome. If you've been diagnosed with 
any form of mental illness don't believe it it's not true that's not who you are you are not, that's not a permanent thing and uh, you can overcome that and, it, and all you have to do is uh, change your how you think and it talks about in the Bible the renewing of your mind and uh, it's actually our thoughts have a major major role in who we are and how we are so if you can change your thoughts and come into accordance with God and with the truth, your life will be completely changed. And uh, and anyone, it's very easy and simple to understand because uh, you can just judge for yourself. If, if your thoughts are wrong and you have wrong ideas, then uh, you're going to have things go wrong in your life. But if you can change your mind and to have proper thinking then uh, your life is going to be uh, better. So uh, I'm not sure what else uh, I can uh, say. Um, I know there's a lot I've learned, and, and for me to uh, basically share that with you and give you the things I learned, I, I don't know if I'm really able to um, to teach you the things that I have learned. Um, but just basically, I can just give you the information that uh, this information that um, you can change and that these uh, diagnoses of uh, mental illness are false and it all comes down to how you think. It's not a permanent condition. It's not based in the physical. It's not caused by chemicals. It's caused by how you think. And uh, I know I'm not a doctor, but according to the world standards, uh, I know the doctors think they're pretty intelligent because they've gone to school and people look up to doctors and in some cases idolize them. But uh, what, I, what I know is from God, it's the truth from God, and I know many people would not agree with what, I, what I'm telling you today, but there are many that will. And for all those who will and would like would, and want to listen, I hope that this is helpful to you. And I really want to encourage you that uh, your life can be changed like my life has been changed. Like I said, I was, I was so down and out of my life. I was even held down and injected with drugs against my will. I was pinned down to the ground when I refused to take medication because my parents gave them a consent because I was under the age of 18. And they would pin me down, hold me down, and inject me with some stuff I didn't want and lock me in seclusion, solitary confinement. And uh, so I was so down and out and just little by little, step by step, baby steps. And what I tell people sometimes is that I basically, I was, I had to learn to crawl. That's how down and out it was. I was like, it was like I was crawling. I had to just crawl and take these little tiny steps and with each step my life began to change even if it was just one step a day something I would do different a different choice that you that we can make in our lives choices affect our lives and even the words we speak affect our lives and people around us but if you can make the right choices your life will benefit but when we make bad choices our life is damaged as a result so what i what i did what i did with god's help was just step by step little tiny steps and then taking little steps and then that that came into bigger steps and then after and then i was taking bigger steps and then it was like i was taking giant leaps and then and then it was like i was flying like I was, I would say I was the most active person here in this entire town just a few years back, hiking and biking and kayaking. I'd go out when it was flood flood season, when the snow melted, and I'd be kayaking out in the river, and the river's like whoosh, raging, and I'm out there kayaking, having a blast, and I out hiking in the woods, walking for a, you know three days, and and just enjoying life and biking all over the place. And uh, I ended up, I didn't really, I don't really ride in round in cars. And I, I still think it's damaging to the, to the world. And people, people are, are becoming, 
where they're sitting in their cars all the time, they're not getting the proper exercise they need and, and their lives are affected. Their health is going down the tubes. And people can, I have a friend that's not too much older than me and he can barely walk. He can't, he, he can't even, he doesn't even wash his dishes because he can't motivate himself to get up and get moving. And his health is going down the tubes. And, and I know people that are living in town, which I live in town now, and uh, instead of like walking to the grocery store, walking to uh, the post office, they hop in their car and they drive there. And they hop out of their car, they walk in, get their groceries, walk uh, out with their mail or whatever, hop back in their car and drive home. Then they go home and they sit down. And all, they spend all their time sitting down. And they don't walk anywhere. And it's so unhealthy. And so, and things like, even things like uh, high blood pressure and high cholesterol, all they do is drug, they give people these drugs. It's just a Band-Aid solution. Instead of like people going out and getting exercise and taking care of themselves and their diet, they, they look for a Band-Aid solution, a quick fix. And that's not the answer because it doesn't actually deal with the root of the problem. And that's the same with these mental illness. They don't deal with the root of the problem. They just throw a Band-Aid solution, throw these drugs on people that are actually damaging to them. And they're, they're hurting. Like the one drug I was on, these medication, so-called medication, one of the side effects was death. I actually ri was risking death. I could actually die from it. And I had to go get blood work and I had to go get electrocardiogram in case it threw my heart out of rhythm and that was a side effect and 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 then their way of helping me was locking me up in a, in these hospital institutions like prison and drugging me and locking me up and that was their way of helping me hurting me and that's their way of help and I'm thinking wow and they think I'm the one that's crazy look what you do to people you're hurting them and you think that you are sane and that I'm insane. And look what you're doing. That's how you help people. You hurt them. But I, for, thankfully, I, I have Jesus in my heart and I've been forgiven and I forgive people. I, don't, I know they don't know what they're doing. I know they don't know God and they, are, they basically, they're lost. And they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to help people. And so I just wanted to share that with you, and I hope it is a help. And um, and uh, and also I look back, and I, I know that, and people might find this hard to uh, understand or believe, is that what, this is actually what God had planned for my life, what I went through in that hospital. And I learned a lot, and I was strengthened um, by what I went through. It was a very uh, learning experience. I actually learned a lot about uh, people's minds, uh, how they work, uh, my own by learning my own about my own mind. Um, to understand anyone, you you need to be able to understand yourself. So if you can understand yourself and and be honest, and uh, be honest with yourself and understand who you are, how you are, how you think, your emotions then you'll be able to understand others. But if you can't understand yourself, then you won't be able to understand others. And this is all because God has helped me and taught me. So I give all glory to God, credit to God. And uh, I actually thank God that I went through that experience, that uh, I can uh, try to reach out and help other people now um, and tell them the truth. And uh, I know people have helped me in my life, and there's been things that are helpful to me. So that's what I try to do with my life. Uh, be of help to others as uh, God would have me do uh, by his power, his spirit. Uh, I seek to live by the uh, leading of God. I know that God is real. Um, I know that Jesus is the way and that is because I have received the Holy Spirit of God which is the spirit of truth that leads me into all truth and uh, anyone that's been born again will will know this. Um, I know that if you have not been born again, you will not be able to understand this. It's not something you can understand with your mind. Because uh, of our sin, we are separated from God and we're in darkness. And you can't figure it out. You can't figure Jesus out. You, you, you must take a leap of faith. Believe in Jesus. Ask God to forgive you. Even if you don't believe in God, ask him. Cry out to God, even if you don't believe in God, and say, Hey God, 
I don't, I don't really know if you're real. I don't really know if Jesus is the way, but if it is, God, please, please, I want to know, and please forgive me, and he will. If you do that with your, your whole self, your whole heart, and fully to God, um, give your, your life to God, God will change you if it's sincere. God knows. God already knows. Uh, you, can't, you can't fake your way with God. You can't pretend. Um, God knows all about you and he knows whether or not you're sincere, whether you are, are truly repentant, if you're sorry for what you've done and if you want to change your life. And uh, I'm thankful to God that uh, he's forgiven me through Jesus and uh, I know this is true and I know that you can know this too. Um, so I hope that uh, you have a wonderful day. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, I know that Jesus is coming back soon because uh, God has revealed this to me as well and as to many others. And uh, there are going to be many people um, saved in these uh, last times. God's going to pour out his Holy Spirit uh, in a massive way. And there's going to be a massive harvest of souls that are going to come out of the darkness and into the light of Jesus, into the light of life. And they are going to be born again, receive eternal life from God. So, uh, God bless you. Praise Jesus. Um, hallelujah. Amen.